Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth. And if you're a spiritual junkie like I am, this is the podcast for you. So I'd love for you to join my community and hit that subscribe button. And you are just going to love my guest today. She's on. She's an expert on things that I wish I was an expert on. So I'm so excited to introduce you to Tamika M. Murray. How are you doing, Tamika? I'm fantastic today. I'm so glad that it's Friday. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I am too. By the time people are watching this, it'll be late Friday. They'll probably be in bed sleeping. But sure. um, I, I'm going to go ahead and read your bio to people. And okay. just so they have a little bit of your background real quick, and then we'll get right into it. Because you guys, this is going to be a fun show. We're going to talk all about things like 5D ascension, Ooh. quantum yeah. physics, <laughs> parallel lives, uh, collapsing realities, maybe all the things that make my brain blow up. <laughs> and maybe Tamika can explain it a lot better than I can. And I'm just all that cool stuff about like, is time an illusion? I don't know. We're going to find out. So here is Tamika's bio. Tamika M. Murray the o is the owner of Mystical Fire Ascension Life Coaching. She brings years of experience as a social worker, award-winning author, educator, astrologer, intuitive, and awakened soul. Her self-published award-winning books, Crying, Learning, and Laughing, Why Students Visit the Teen Center, and From Grunt Work to Light Work, A Homeowner's Guide to Attracting Buyers. These are must-reads. However, she's also penned eight nonfiction children's books for the school library market. Her work has appeared in numerous online publications, including healthnews.com, medium.com, and hubpages.com. She was also a trending news writer for deliciably.com. Did I say that right? Deliciably. <laughs> Contact her for assistance, accountability, and results during your spiritual awakening. So a fire ascension life coach. So tell me a little bit about that before we get into the questions, like a little bit about what, like if somebody was going to come to you, what's a good time for them to come to you? I mean, you can really come to me at any time <laughs> because the Ascension or Awakening journey, you know, you you don't, there's, there's no linear start and finish with it. We're always awakening and evolving because well, that's our jobs here <laughs> as well, you know, and that's, that's the path that we're all on right now, whether people realize it or not. However, I will say that my online course, the I Got You course that's launching soon on mm -hmm. February 24th, it is tailored more towards people that are at the beginning of this journey. Like okay. they're realizing that, hmm. There, there's there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense about this world that we live in. And we're they're starting to do those deep dives on social okay. media. Like, well, you know, maybe those conspiracy theories that I was like hearing about like all these years, maybe there's more to them than I realized because I mean, stuff's just not adding up. <laughs> so it's a great time to reach out to me if you're at the beginning, but even if you're at the middle part, which again, I mean, it's, it's difficult to gauge like what the middle is, but for me personally, I feel like somebody is like at the the middle of the ascension or awakening process as if they've already gone through like the initial deep dive. Um, they could have also gone through what we consider to be the dark night of the soul mm, mm -hmm. shadow work. Yeah. Everybody loves hearing about oh, yeah. shadow <laughs> work and all that stuff. You kind of get tired of it after a while, but there's no you know, it's just so hard to go through. Like, I'm just glad that I hope I don't have a second one. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. And I mentioned this in the program that you can have more than one dark night of the soul. I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I feel as though I definitely had one before. Um, and usually grief or trauma of some kind, like Figures a traumatic it. event will trigger that. Um, for me personally, it was the unexpected loss of my mother. You know, I always tell people, Last time I saw her was Thanksgiving Day of 2016, uh, Black Friday. She, you know, took my grandmother out. She ran errands. We texted each other because I was out of the home that we co-owned together. I was with my boyfriend, who I was with at the time. And I woke up that Saturday morning to missed calls, voice mm -hmm. messages, basically saying that she had been rushed to the hospital. And by the time I got to the hospital, she was gone. So, yeah, just imagine the shock <laughs> that that triggered in me. It, I literally felt like, and I did, 
wake up in a parallel universe, like a different reality than what I went to sleep in. Uh, you must have felt um, so just disconnected from your body because yes. like, you know, my mom, like we talked about this, my mom died on Christmas day, but yes. we, she had cancer and we had a lot of time to prepare. Um, you know, we were taking care of her for, I mean, at least six months you know, and it was slower. So you have that time to mentally and emotionally and spiritually prepare. Yeah, and then you see yeah. her suffering. And then, you know, you're almost at by that time, just like, mm -hmm. thank God she released her body, you know, because she was yeah. suffering. And I certainly don't want to be like, please let me go. Let me go sooner than later, you know? Yeah. So I just, um, and again, you have all my empathy for going through that. I mean, it, it's, it's difficult enough to lose anyone, but when it happens around a holiday, um, I know, and it same just, with it you. Just adds, yeah, it adds to it because then you, you don't, you can't ignore when it comes around every, every time. It has to be so surreal for you because like, because yeah. it was unexpected and because even for me, mm -hmm. I'll forget sometimes, like I'll be riding, she, she lived a mile and a half from my house. So I would be driving there and I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna go stop, oh, wait. You know, like, it's so weird. And I guess that's like the time thing, like time isn't linear. So you, like I'm dipping back into. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get instances where I wanna text her or call her about something because I was just <laughs> at um, my alma mater last week and it hit me how much when I was going to school there, because I was a commuter, how much I would call her or text mm -hmm. her throughout my day, just, you know, when I was like on a break between classes and stuff. So it's almost like I, it's very difficult for me to go anywhere, especially in my hometown, um, without thinking about her. But yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, it was a shock. Um, and wow. it triggered a very bad dark night of the soul. So of course, I went to grief counseling, because I was a social mm -hmm. worker at the time. And, and I'm all about grief counseling. But that can only do so much, especially when you go through losing somebody in a very traumatic way. And even though it wasn't like an accident or anything like that, it was still traumatic. You know, waking up one minute she was here and the next minute she was gone. And I'm just like, and she was only 56. Oh, yeah. my gosh. 56, oh, so. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, that's too young. It was. But you know what? I'm a firm believer that, and not everybody agrees with this, but a lot of people do, that we choose a lot of the life experiences that we come here mm -hmm. to, to learn from lessons and experiences. So I firmly believe that our higher selves even know like when we're going to leave here and how yeah. it's going to happen. Um, and some people, I'm sure that if you ask, you might actually be told like when it's going to happen. But I think most people probably don't want to know because then they'll try to do everything they can to avoid it. So you know, I, I'm a firm believer that when it's meant to, when it's your time to go and it's your time to go. And it was we have a really famous, like, uh, I don't know if he, how famous he, he's famous in Cincinnati where I live, but, mm -hmm. um, very popular, uh, psychic medium here in Cincinnati, his name's Thomas Winlow. And I did not ask when I went to see him, which was only one time he immediately told me because he says we have exit points. So, and we can choose different exit points, right? Yeah. But he's like, oh, you signed up to be here till you're 92 and just tells me right away. And I'm like, oh, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long time. But then, like, as I was leaving, he goes, oh, and, you know, maybe some of your bad habits might have that you've had over your lifetime might have shortened that 92. So I'm like, OK, now what does that mean? Like, I didn't ask for either one. And then now that's in my head. That's so funny. But, you know, whatever. Well, that just goes to show you that there are exit points and that you can definitely change your time as well. Because yeah. my mother and I used to go to this woman named Midge and she's known, there's people around the world that know who Midge is. She was very well known and she was based in Hamilton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, so very well known psychic uh, medium and sweetest lady, sweetest lady, about four foot 10. <laughs> and I always had to like bend down to hug her. She's the cutest thing. And, you know, she was like, we, we have more control over our lives than people realize. So, you know, if, if you want to make changes, you, you definitely can, you know, put it that way. Wow. There's, there's definitely ways around that. And yeah. I've heard that confirmed, you know, oh, by, yeah. by yourself. You we know? create our own reality. And I know yeah. like, like some people can come in, you know, be like, okay, I'm not going to be, and I was told this happened to me. So, I decided I did not want to have a soulmate in this lifetime because I had okay. past lifetimes where 
I was like in abusive relationships mm-hmm. and I was like, this time I'm going to just not come in with a soulmate, not no, no one predetermined, but I, if I want to, I can call one in if I like, you know, so that's kind of exactly what you're saying is yeah. you know, just because it wasn't maybe in my blueprint, like mm-hmm. you are going to meet this. I can change yeah. my blueprint, my soul's blueprint. So, so let's go to, I wanted so you guys, I met Tamika on Instagram and what caught my eye and I'm going to have her tell the story because it was, it happened to her, it's her real life. And, mm-hmm. um, and I was just like, Ooh, I want to have her on my podcast because, cause I could tell she knew what she was talking about and, I could, and she's having these 5d experiences, uh, you oh, know? Gosh. Yes. She has, <laughs> and her, we've talked, she's had a lot of them, but this is the one that I watched this reel that she made. So do you mind telling uh, the viewers this story? No, that's fine. Um, okay. So I'm trying to remember the date. It wasn't that long ago. I feel like this was probably like before the holiday season. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little bit before the months. Yeah. I would say probably maybe November ish. Mm-hmm. That, that since we both know that time is but an illusion anyway. And I'm horrible so, with time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that's part of the ascension process. Like, okay, when we start to really detach from the programming and realize that time is but an illusion, um, we really start to have issues with memory. We do. Um, but this incident or occurrence that happened to me, I firmly remember what I remember. So, okay, long story short, I believe it was a Sunday. I was having issues sleeping because we had a lot of those uh, solar flares coming in and CMEs, which are coronal mass extractions, I believe they're called. But don't quote me on that. I always forget what one of the E's, what the E stands for. So people just call them CMEs. And it's just like, you know, these mass and this energy that's coming off of the the sun. I'm no expert on that, but, you know, I watch enough TikToks to get familiar with it. (laughs) I'm a TikTok expert on some things. (laughs) Yeah. So I have, um, I knew that we were having a lot of solar flares coming through, which we have them going on right now too. It's not going to stop. They're going to continue. And I couldn't sleep that night. So I went to bed relatively late. I'm already um, a night owl, but I was up Mm -hmm. until like two, maybe three o'clock in the morning. I just couldn't sleep. My, My body was just wired with all this energy coming in. And so I remember going to sleep. I had spent some time outside um, grounding myself. I do so either like putting my bare feet on the ground or connecting with my tree that's out there. I just do that. I'm one of those tree people. (laughs) Well, everybody needs to do that. Everybody needs to ground you guys. It's so important. Look into it. It is. It is. So go to sleep. Get up the later that morning. I didn't sleep that much, but enough. Go outside to let me and my little kitties have some fresh air. I have three of them. And yeah. I go outside, first thing I notice on the ground that there are rose petals near my tree. And I was like, what the hell? Where did these come from? I was in, well, shock. I I literally was. And I'm very connected with my higher source, you know, spirits, um, because we're surrounded by spirits, but whether or not we're (laughs) vibing high enough to interact with them or hear them or even see them, that's entirely, you know, a person to person thing. Um, So for me, I'm very connected. And my higher self was trying to explain to me, like, you put them there. And I'm like, when? Like, I, I was like, I didn't put those there before I went to sleep. I'm like, what are you talking about? And from what I could understand or comprehend because my mind was just like not I I felt like I was literally having an out-of-body experience because it just it shocked me so much they were trying to make it get me to see that yes I did put them there however when I put them there was not before I went to sleep that particular night so what happened and my take on it is that I shifted timelines, which again, I've kind of been getting away from the word timeline. because Yeah, what do you use instead? I use parallel universes now, which a lot of people who listen to like Bashar, (laughs) if you're familiar with Bashar. I listen to Bashar all the time. One of my Um, favorites. 
people are either for or against Bashar. I'm like, look, it's, it is what it is. You don't have to believe what he says. That's fine. But I love listening to him and being objective because mm -hmm. a lot of what he says resonates and, you know, he's an entity or a being that is channeled by Daryl Anka, mm -hmm. um, who is a human <laughs> like us. Mm -hmm. And he says the same thing that really, we're always shifting to parallel universes, like throughout the day, um, depending on what your vibration and frequency is, because we're all energy, you know, even though we're in physical bodies right now, we're still, what are the bodies made up of? Energy. Um, matter, yes, but energy. So they were trying to make me or get me to understand my higher self was that, yes, I put them there, but not on the same um, parallel universe that I was in when I went to sleep. So I'm thinking to myself, well, I remember putting rose petals out there that color, but it wasn't the night that wasn't like four hours prior to when I went to sleep that night. It was actually in October. Right. Um, so what I did was, and I show in the video, I picked up one of the roses that had been sitting outside on the ground, just kind of decomposing, because that's what I do sometimes. I just toss them outside to decompose instead of putting them in a plastic bag. To mm -hmm. go into the yeah. ground. <laughs> and I just tossed my my flowers out there to decompose. So I picked up the one and then I picked up the stem, which I didn't show on camera, but I probably should have. It was under the table and it looked fresh. Like I had just plucked the the petals like a couple hours earlier. And I was just so unless I did show it. It's been so long. You did? I, like, that's what... That's I, okay, I don't sit there and watch my own TikTok, so sometimes I don't remember, like, what I showed on camera and what I didn't. Yeah, you showed it, and, and also what I could feel, Tamika, was the authenticity. You were, like, truly yeah. shocked. Like, you you, you filmed it while you were still, like, what in the actual... Beep. I went inside and, like, grabbed my phone because I'm like, there's just no way... <laughs> Like, I can't keep this to myself. I'm like, this is just too weird of an occurrence for me to keep to myself. So mm -hmm. I did. And that's how you found it. And I was like, yeah, I definitely shifted. Something happened because, you know, I've been hearing for months now that what's happening is that a lot of lower vibrational timelines or parallel universes. I still like the word timelines because it's easier for people to understand. It is because a lot of people still are associated with linear time. And I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> Technically, we still kind of have to live with it if we're making appointments and stuff like that. But you have to. Yeah. Yeah. But being aware of it, um, that helps it to like kind of like disintegrate almost. We're getting to a point where we're not going to be, you know, slaves. I hate to say it or servants to a clock. basically. Yes. So, True. yeah, I mean, that was my experience. And what's happening is I feel like I almost or not almost, but I feel like I shifted um, or that parallel universe, when I put the petals out there in October, merged with where mm -hmm. I was in November. Um, yeah. And I've been saying this to people, maybe I don't know if I've mentioned it to you or not, but I know I've mentioned it to people in my personal life where it feels like I shifted back to a point of things that I was working on back in October. Um, and it's just so interesting to me. I almost feel like I'm at a place where I'm redoing certain things wow. that I'm dealing with during the eclipses. Because remember, we were in eclipse season during yeah. October. Um, and I feel like one started in October and then we had the other one like early November because they were two weeks apart. Um, so yeah, it definitely feels like I'm like going back and dealing with um, with certain things, um, but in a good way. In a yeah. Good way. So what's a like... For some viewers who might not even be familiar, they're like, they they watch, they're, they turn this on because we're talking about 5D and they might want to be learning about it. They might not know what Ascension is. Is yeah. there is there a simple, maybe there's not a simple definition. Is there a simple way that you can explain to any viewers who are, are new to 5D Ascension? Yeah, from what I've gathered in this, it, it's not necessarily a universal definition by any means, but mm -hmm. just my take on it is it's we're at a time of awakening, you know, for people that are into astrology. Yes, we are in the age of Aquarius. And again, there's going to be people that argue about that. But I feel like at this point in Earth's history, humans just like to argue. Um, I think it's it's something that we're we're purging through, you know, when working through as we ascend the judgment, the arguing, all that stuff, the fear. We're like purging through all of that as we mm -hmm. ascend. So it's fine. It's part of who we are. Um, but yeah, while we're on this awakening, 
awakening journey. Basically, it's waking up to number one, realizing that we've been giving our power away mm -hmm. to, you know, <laughs> all kinds of things, whether it be jobs, government entities that may not necessarily have the best interest of the people at mind, um, these banking systems, uh, even utility companies to a certain degree, all of our basic needs we have to pay for, including taxes and all that stuff. So people are waking up to this thing, you know, the system that we've been locked into um, for so long, but that we also agree to it as well, because if you don't speak out on something, well, then you're technically giving your consent to it because mm -hmm. inaction is still making the choice to accept it. So when it comes to awakening, you're opening your eyes to how we've been living. You're wanting to take your power back and be a sovereign being. And you're also realizing that we have way more control over our lives than we've been led or programmed to believe. And the programming doesn't just come from like the government or society it's it's stuff that trickles down into our family our friends the school systems like everything you know from really cradle to grave I always say we're just we were being programmed to think and act a certain way and it's different country to country state by state but it's still there you know when people are awakening to wanting to be independent-minded um have control over their lives and also realizing that physically, emotionally, spiritually, we really are divine beings that can create our own reality. Like we don't yes. need to be told how to, you know, live. We can figure it out for ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. No. So thank you for, thank you for, that was a really great explanation. Yeah. So, it's it's um, difficult to put it into words, but I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. So when it comes to ascension in your life, can you let me know, let us know the old you, the old Tamika versus the more ascended version of Tamika? And we're always ascending. We're always evolving. That's a that's a never ending game, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be finished evolving. Let's put it that way. No, so, you don't. So, so, yeah, you want to keep evolving. And so what was like the Tamika pre awakening versus post awakening? Or ascending, whichever one you want to go with dimming my light so much um people pleasing and just not being oh yeah like I, and i feel like this gets put and placed on females so much more than men and men again i know that they always have their own set of rules that they're supposed to live by and play by so i'm not saying that men aren't taught to be people pleasers as well, because I, I can definitely see how males can be taught to be people pleasers, but in different ways yeah. um, than females. But just for me personally, being a people pleaser, dimming my light, playing it small. Being a um, good girl. Got to be a good yeah. girl so everybody likes you. Yeah, just like the guilt and all that stuff. And like, again, I'm going to go back to Mitch because she's a sweet, she was the sweetest lady, um, but I've lost contact with her um, over the years because she did get sick, unfortunately. Oh, um, she did. Yeah. So, um, you know, she she basically described me as somebody who's constantly standing in line. And when there's somebody who says, oh, excuse me, can I get in front of you? I only have like a few items in my arms. You'll happily say, oh, yeah, by all means, get in front of me because that's the polite thing to do. Mm -hmm. So she basically said that I was constantly doing that throughout my life and not realizing just how much I bring to the table, mm -hmm. just how much of a powerful, intelligent woman I am. Um and for the longest time, I struggled with that, you know, self-concept. And I still work on it. I feel like we're always a work in progress when it comes to that. Absolutely. Um, so that's definitely how I was. And, you know, my spiritual awakening started back in like 2005, 2006, which mm -hmm. for a lot of people, that was relatively a while ago. I've met a lot of people who said that it happened for them around the time that the pandemic hit. Um, and I have my own views on why that happened too so mm -hmm. yeah but um yeah mine started a while ago and I went through the deep dive where I was getting into people like Michael Tessarian um David Icke they've both been around for a while have written a lot yeah. of books 
And, you know, I, I did a lot of that deep diving conspiracy theory stuff all the way back then. I was part of this forum, EVP, where we were doing reversals of audio. And the things that I heard in those reversals, and we used to share them, let's just say that my TikTok feed and just the internet period are full of videos and interviews with people that are literally confirming a lot of the stuff yeah. I heard about back in like, 2008, 9, 10, when I was part of this forum. So it's like, yeah, part of me is kind of like sitting here like, yeah, I told you so type of thing. Yeah. Would ridicule us. And I didn't really tell many people about the forum that I was on. Absolutely not. But there were a select few amongst my family and friends who did know and they were awakened souls back then as well. Mm -hmm. But you just couldn't talk about it as openly as you can now. But there was a reason for that. We had to get to this point where enough people were finally starting to see behind the veil. And this is our tipping point that we're at now where we right, have, right. are allowed to awaken and decide whether or not we want to stay asleep or whether or not we want to continue on the evolution. And you see the split happening. You really do. Yeah. Um, you and know, it, used to, it was 50, 50 for a long time, but like you said, mm -hmm. we're over that tipping point and now there's more light, you know? Absolutely. And I love that. I love where we are right now. And, you know, I learned even within the past few days to just stop trying to wake everyone up. Yes. Uh, yeah. I went to not part here. of everybody's journey. Yeah. And that's hard for me yeah. too. I know it's hard. It's very <laughs> it is because you want to try and help people and you think you're being helpful. And even I noticed it like, I need to just stop pushing my like stuff that I do that works for me off on people. Yeah. Um, even when we were interacting the other day, I was like, oh my God, I was like, I just like literally regurgitated like all this stuff to Mary Beth. And I'm just like, no, but I loved it. I, 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 um, I, I know it was not I one thing bad. that you said that I wasn't already down with. Like I, we're, we're, we're in tune. We're in tune. And my, my awakening was like 1993, but like you said earlier, yeah, we can go back to sleep if we want. And I, I, um, I didn't know what to do with it back then because yeah. there was no internet. If I had had the internet, I could have found a yeah. tribe. I could have talked to people. I mm -hmm. went to the library, even though, you know, I read about it and I figured out like people were calling it spiritual awakening, Nirvana. Uh, I, I don't think it was a enlightenment. I think it was just mm -hmm. an awakening where I was suddenly in 5d and mm -hmm. I didn't know what that you couldn't find any books that said that back then. Mm -hmm. But but now that I know what 5D is, I'm like, that's what I was doing. I, for two weeks, I was in 5D and I looked like I'm crazy because everyone else mm -hmm. is straight up 3D. And then I, I mean, you know, what do you do? And then I got really depressed because I, I didn't mm -hmm. know how to integrate that. I was yeah. 18 years old. So mm -hmm. everyone thinks I'm crazy. My family thinks I'm crazy. My friends think I'm crazy. So mm -hmm. that I started, that's when I started to drink a lot of alcohol because it was the closest once I came down out of, and I was back in 3d and I, then you, you clearly remember all the bliss and oneness mm -hmm. connected, you, you, you know, all those downloads I was getting and everything stopped. And then it was depressing, you know, like nobody talks mm -hmm. about that part. And then, <laughs> no, so, so that's why I started drinking is because I couldn't feel connected to anybody anymore. And mm -hmm. I'm not blaming it, but I'm like, everything worked out perfectly. And I'm sure that happened to me because that would put me on this trajectory, right? And, and oh, it's a path that I would have never found if I didn't have, you know, the crazy up and down and dark night of the soul, the crazy contrast. And, you know, like that's, you don't know light until you experience dark. Yes. Oh my gosh. But I didn't do anything to have my awakening. Yeah. And sometimes I think that happens. Like some people could meditate forever and mm -hmm. just never get there. And then for me, I was just reading a book and it triggered it. You know, there could be, you could trip and somebody could have a Kundalini awakening when they, you know, just trip it on the sidewalk. And then other people try really hard and nothing ever happens. <laughs> I didn't even get into that part of how that happened for me. Well, um, I'll okay. try to sum it up really quickly. Yeah, I want to hear about it. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> like you, I kind of did go back to sleep for a while, like between like 2010 and 2022, um, which is a huge gap. But again, because of the yeah. reversals we were getting and what we were hearing back then, there was always issue with time. So it would get to the point where we'd hear like, oh, the earth is finally awakening. We're being freed and all this stuff. And then it was like year after year would happen coming. And it was like, I wasn't really seeing the changes out here, yeah. wasn't really seeing it in society or on social media. So I was like, well, okay. So fast forward to 22 or July of 2022. 
And my ex at the time, we had almost been together for six years. We have a breakup, um, which initially I was devastated until I realized I manifested that breakup. It was my soul crying out. I knew I should have ended it sooner, but didn't, which, you know, we all do that at some point. That's, Mm -hmm. that's yeah. just how life works. So he did that on the full moon of 2022. I remember because it was in cap and we were, were both caps. Um, fast forward to August and this woman that I follow on social media, she's the best. Her name is Jess Alexander. Um, very reputable shop where she sells all kinds of things, uh, candles, you name it. And she's an astrologer as well. She was doing a cord cutting ceremony for free. Mm -hmm. And I thank her so much to, from the bottom of my heart for offering this because I did it because I was picking up on my ex's sadness. Cause of course we were still living together, still sharing a room and everything. Oh, that's the Nobody, awkward. Yeah. And nobody really knew about my breakup yet. I wasn't ready to talk about it because we had been together for so long. So she does the cord cutting ceremony on ironically the new moon or the full moon in Aquarius, which we're having the new moon in Aquarius today. So that's what made me remember that. Um, she does the cord cutting on what would have been my six year anniversary with him. Oh, wow. August 11th. Yeah. Yeah. In my sleep, I have this dream that this very attractive, handsome man walks through the door and comes over to me and hugs me so tightly that I felt it in my sleep and woke up very shocked, very confused, and just like, what, what is going on here? Like, I have no idea what to put into words. Kept it to myself again for a little bit because I wasn't sure what was going on. Decided to do research on soulmates because I, I everybody knows about soulmates and everything mm -hmm. like that. So I'm like, okay. I start looking up soulmates, but then I start typing in like prophetic dreams and what was starting to happen with him. So Twin Flames came up and it kept coming up over and over again. I had never even heard of the term before. Mm. And um, you know, the telepathy. Mm -hmm. the 5d experiences some of them which can get very um heated <laughs> in the 5d and you're feeling all of this here in the physical realm but i'm able to tap in and see the visuals yeah here in the physical which is very very confusing yes the downloads like you mentioned the visions and i'm seeing everything i'm seeing like our wedding our kids like mm -hmm. marriage vows you name it and I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, started hearing him, songs being sent to me. And I'm just like, wow. Ow. And yet we haven't met here in the physical. Um, so that just added to it. Because a lot of people, depending on how you write out how it's going to play out in this lifetime, because we've been together several past lifetimes here, um, you know, sometimes you meet in the 4D before you meet here in person mm -hmm. and other people, it's different. Sometimes you actually meet physically and then you'll have like the runner chaser. You'll go through the separation period and all that stuff. So, you know, what I found out is that we've gone through that several lifetimes. So in this lifetime, we decided to do it differently. Like a lot of other people have, whereas you meet in the 4D first, start having the 5D experiences so that you start doing the inner work because- yeah. Twin flames share a chakra system, which is not easy to share a chakra system with somebody. And that's just a lot of energy to be shared. Yeah. So, you know, that, that awakened me in the Kundalini as well, like going through that, um, that in and of itself just added to it. So yeah. I, knew, I was having to go through that while writing, living with my ex and house hunting and once I got into my house last March, I went through around Easter, the, um, what do you call it? Ascension flu that some people get with the symptoms and everything. Yeah. I was going to ask you, yeah, I that was my next that. question is what are some signs and symptoms? Yeah. If anybody's like having yeah. weird shit going on and they can't, you yeah. know, maybe it's Ascension uh, signs and symptoms that you're, you're, you're like, can't figure out. Like I know there's ringing in the ears is one. 
I hear, I hear a lot, like a I lot. I had everything you could think of. I had the congestion. I had the head pressure. I had so much going on physically. And it doesn't stop because all of our bodies are really getting upgraded. You know, mm -hmm. we really are moving from a, a denser body, physical form, more carbon based into more of a, a crystalline body from what I've heard. Yeah. yeah. Say this as well. Um so yeah, it's not an easy process to go through, but again, we signed up for it. So, you know, right, right. Yeah, this has been an ongoing thing for me since 2022. And um, it's, yeah, not like the flu's two weeks or whatever. This is like Ascension yeah. flu is yeah. ongoing and until, and it's, yeah, like it's your body's going through a huge upgrade. So um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other signs and symptoms that, like well, my, gut migraines, my, a lot of people are getting migraines um, in, in gut too. gut, gut issues. Too. Yeah, especially um, because for me personally, if you're one of those people that struggles with confidence or have in the past, mm -hmm. your gut and your solar plexus are right in the same area. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So if you're having issues with the solar plexus, it can very well materialize into a physical elements because they're all aligned. So whatever is going on with your chakras, if they're blocked or out of alignment, it can, it shows up eventually mm -hmm. in the physical world. So yeah, for me and other people that I've been following on social media, they have been complaining about gut issues. Um, yeah. It's like change my diet. I've had to change my diet too. And I got, I got to tell you what I woke up to last night in the middle of the night. So I, I try not to keep my you know, YouTube or something on and, you know, like Wi-Fi on next to my bed. But last night I fell asleep listening to um, YouTube. I wake up in the middle of the night, like 3 a.m. and it's Bashar, you know, it's it's Daryl Anka chanting yeah. Bashar. And mm -hmm. I, I just told my friend this this morning because I was like, it was so weird because like my subconscious woke me up just to hear this because I have so many food allergies all of a sudden. And mm -hmm. um, so Bashar was saying the the channel, Daryl, mm -hmm. Daryl Anka, he had to quit eating sugar. His body yeah. developed an allergy yes. to sugar. And, and what it is, it's like, it's your, our bodies are telling us what, if we want to ascend into uh -huh. these crystalline bodies, you can't play around with this lower level, lower mm -hmm. vibrational substances anymore. It happened to me with alcohol. Like I could not tolerate alcohol anymore, like overnight. Mm -hmm. And then um, it happened to me with sugar. It mm -hmm. happened to me with just a lot of certain things that I had like dairy and, mm -hmm. and I feel so good now. And it's like <laughs> my body developed allergies like my face was blowing up things that i was able i was i would i'm a cheese freak like i was eating cheese all the time i love heavy whipping cream in my coffee i can't do it my face blows up my my body was and then maybe it's a 5d ascension thing but my body just started telling me no more mm -hmm. you talk to traditional people or you know doctors people who don't believe the spiritual part they're just going to simply say yeah gut issue you know like um you just like like it's all physical but there's always a mm -hmm. spiritual like louise hay you know there's always a spiritual reason that we're having physical symptoms there's always something spiritual behind it because i say that you know and people they can believe this or not but i know there's a lot of people out there that do believe it that this is really the dream world you know when we're mm -hmm. communicating and living here this is the dream reality that illusion. our our over soul as they call it you know the one that's really basically the direct connection to source um that one never leaves the higher realms you know right. so you can very well be living all, a, a different life like in the pleiades sirius yeah. lyra somewhere else um the higher realms um because we're all really ascended masters you know mm -hmm. back here to um have this experience and really to help raise the vibration of earth because yes there are actual earth souls there were souls here that originated on earth before the fall that happened you know mm -hmm. uh with atlantis and lemuria and all of that stuff it gets very complicated about earth's history a lot of this stuff has been hidden for yeah, some billy carson is is helpful with that yeah right <laughs> billy carson. we're gonna get does. into we're gonna get into some of his stuff too but yeah that because interesting man <laughs> I would like people to look into Billy Carson. If you, if, if this stuff sounds cool to you, you're going to love B yeah. Billy Carson. He, he's, he, like he always says, he's got the receipts. He really does a lot of deep research. He travels the world, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's got like the proof of the stuff that he talks about. Unlike me, 
I'm just kind of regurgitating what, what Billy says usually. And, I mean, <laughs> that happens to a lot of us, myself included. But here's the thing, you know, because I don't even know what term to use. Some people say the powers that were. <laughs> I say the powers that were. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the powers that were have gone out of their way to keep a lot of this hidden. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I view them differently now than I used to as well, because the, you know, one of the ladies I go to for Reiki, because I do know two ladies that do Reiki, um, she always says that everybody has their part to play. Yeah. So, so even the people that have been perceived as being like the bad guys or women, they still had a part to play in all of this, because think of it this way. If they were being completely nice to us and treating us fairly and equally, would we have even woken up right. from the fact that we've been asleep for so long? Probably not. Yeah. Which is why so many people now who have been here for decades and decades, I'll use my grandmother as an example. She was born in 1932. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking about how life was so different for her back yeah. then. Um, especially a woman from the South and what she had to endure before moving to New York City as a teenager. It was completely shocking. Um, but just how, you know, she didn't always focus on the negative aspects. She mm -hmm. would always talk about like the good things about her life growing up. And I feel like people who are older, because age is but an illusion as well. Right. Um, we're all ageless and eternal. Mm -hmm. But you know, people tend to always think back to previous decades, like the 50s, the 60s, even the 70s, because there was much more of a sense of community, um, whether or not people were still prescribing to the whole segregation thing in and of itself. That's a different conversation, which there was a lot more of that back then as well. Right. And still is to a certain degree, even now, that stuff has not gone away. Right. Um, people tend to focus on the fact that there just seemed to be a lot more kindness or at least the perception of kindness yeah previous decades and now the world isn't making sense to them but it's not making sense to them for a reason because they're finally awakening to what's really been going on mm -hmm. right in front of their faces but they were turning a blind eye to it right basically. Right. And we um, have the power in numbers too to make things that's what so that's what I love about Billy Carson too talking about yeah. that all the time is like we actually, you know, we're, we've got the numbers, like, the, you know, there's the elites and yeah, they've got control, they've, you know, but, but we can quickly turn that around. It's just, it's just, yeah. I think that's why we always are trying to wake people up because we know the more people we wake up, the faster, let's go, let's go, let's, let's, let's ascend. <laughs> but before I was, um, before I got on with you, Erin Lyons went on live. And oh, did she? Yeah. And she was talking about this exact stuff. And so I wrote down something that she said, she said, we are never ending streams of consciousness experiencing the illusion of linear time. Um, mm -hmm. the, the linear consciousness allows us to have the experience of a story unfolding, mm -hmm. but in reality, time's just stacked, right? Like there's no, <laughs> there's no really, but our consciousness has to have this type of focus so we can feel like we're having this yeah. unfolding story when it's really just now. And Everything that's why now. so many people talk about how you really can they call it quantum jump, you know, yes. or jumping timelines or parallel universes, as they call it. And I've done it several times through meditations because it always looks different for me when I do a meditation. But what will happen is, especially when I get into that heart center, I will see literally all these earths like stacked in front of me, almost wow. like a line going out in front of me. And depending on where I want to go, what's my highest healed timeline? Because you want to go to a healed one or a parallel unit. Yeah, yeah, got to throw that word in. Healed, please. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't just say like, oh, I want to go here because this, that, and that's happening. No, you want to make sure that it's healed too. That is um, smart, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like I can see it, it like in a line and I'll just like, when I make that connection, I'll like jump to it. And usually I can feel it like, I literally can feel it physically in my heart um, when I'm able to do that leap. Yeah, that is, that is awesome. I want to learn how to do that. So, so let's, since we already kind of brought up Billy Carson. Oh, sure. Collapsing realities. 
<laughs> yeah. What, was I that, warned you I was going to bring that up. Was talking about Marvel in that video, or was that a separate one? Because he's done like a lot. That of was a separate videos. one, but okay. I hear I, I hear him talk about it all the time. Is that we can like okay. and, and and by the way that live that Aaron was doing right before I got mm -hmm. on here with you, she was doing a live and she was talking about the same thing and she was t saying that um, we we never really waste time. That's not really a thing because we're so able to collapse time and mm -hmm. and and save years of our lives if we know how to do it. And I didn't get to the part where she said how to do it, but yeah, I'm I know Billy Carson says he does it all the time, and I'm I'm still trying to figure out how. How do we collapse time and collapse realities? My thing is, and I feel like this is part of it, if not all of it, is being in the moment. Oh. And if you notice, being in the moment seems to be one of the most difficult and challenging things to do in this simulation because there's so many distractions. Mm -hmm. And the distractions come from the need to have to pay to live on the planet that you live on. Like, why does that even make sense to people that we have to pay to live on the planet that we were born on? I just and I just saved a meme from last night. It said something like I was going to try to find it, but it said something like there is no state. Well, it's talking about the United States. I know other places are even worse. There's there's not one state in America where someone could have a minimum wage job and afford you know, and work 40 hours a week and afford a two bedroom apartment. Can't even afford, a, you know, a, a one bedroom apartment. Really? Not these days. Apartments are expensive. <laughs> Apartments are expensive. Houses are expensive. Like just everything is ridiculous. And again, that's part of this whole, you know, simulation, you know, to keep people distracted, to keep people in a low in survival mode, of We're in survival mode, survival mode and fear. They go hand in hand. So people really do have to go out of their way to break free of that. But one of the best ways to do that is live in the moment and laugh. Mm -hmm. I find myself laughing at this simulation as often as possible because it really is a joke. <laughs> like it's just, yeah. you can't take certain things here too seriously because then that's, that's when you start to get hurt. Basically. I love that. Um, I absolutely and, love that. That is yeah. And I'm not saying that you need to like not feel your emotions. Absolutely not. We came here to feel emotions. We came here to feel all of them. Sometimes I kind of regret that. But <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> emotions are the most enjoyable to feel, but you'll feel them when you're here on earth. And just laughter and being in the moment. I feel like that that is the fastest way to get you to your heart's desire is to just enjoy life and live through love not take things too seriously no. because yeah yeah i mean because it is it's interesting because people really do go through traumatic traumatic horrible mm -hmm. things and then i've known people who've gone through the worst and yet they can be the most light people like and just most positive and then other people who like just kind of had like something that and i know we're not supposed to compare traumas i know i know but let's say someone else had something that happened to them, you know, like when they were seven or eight, and they're still hanging on to this thing, this one incident, and they let it take over their whole life. And then you have someone else who's like, you just like, the whole family's murdered, and then they end up being like, you know what I mean? And and they're okay, and they're positive, and they they turn everything in, in, into um, a way to teach other people or something. They, they use it for good, for positive, And it's just interesting how you got those two types of people. And I guess it's like growth minded versus <laughs> fixed minded fixed mindset you know maybe but it's it's i've 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 really seen that a lot where it's amazing how people can get stuck and dwell because we are supposed to feel all the feels right but we don't we're not supposed to dwell in the the negative stuff you know the the i still say lower vibrations i still say lower even though it's just a different rate um but because I've had the lower and I've had the higher and I prefer the higher. <laughs> I do too. And see, I think that's, that's the whole point is that we're moving out of this whole duality thing yeah. you know, where everything in the higher realms, like the 5d, everything is happening in the now moment. Yeah. And we all came back here to experience seeing clarity to see creation as a process instead yeah. of being able to manifest something instantaneously. And I'm like, okay, but I'm getting to the point where I really just want to manifest things instantaneously. Because yeah, me too. I've had enough of these experiences. 
and lessons here. Like I'm ready to keep, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And some people, it, it, it makes me sad that they're not there yet, but I can understand why they're not there yet because it's at a certain point, it is scary to wake up. It, it is scary. And, overwhelming. And yeah. It, it can be very overwhelming and scary. Mm -hmm. So I get it. I, I, I totally get it. But, um, but once you start seeing these things there, you can't unsee these. Like once your mind's expanded. Yeah. You luck. can't unsee them. And then, you know, tapping into what are considered to be psychic abilities, which we all have, we've all just been programmed to either fear them or think that they're evil, which True. there's really no such thing as good and bad, evil. Like, again, you know, that's duality. We're, we're all things, yet nothing at all. Not which, to bring up Erin Lyons again, but she said yeah. that we're all, this is, what, this is how she's channeled. She said that even the, like, kind of, it's kind of what you said earlier, too, about the, um, uh, like, we all play a role. You said something like that. And she said yeah. that, that even the most evil is God experiencing itself on, yeah. um, on a different frequency, you know, on, and I said different instead of yeah. lower, disconnected from. Yeah. So we're just on, it's all different frequencies. And like you said, it's all relative. How do we know the, the light if we haven't experienced the dark? Well, here's one thing that startled me when I started going through my dark night, because then I started having visions of um, my past lives. And I even did a video on this as well, because I was talking about judgment, which I've had to work on because so all of us are like programmed to judge everybody yes. about everything. And I said in the video, and I still hold to this, is that if you knew how you were in your past lives, you wouldn't judge anybody because even if you consider yourself to be a good, kind person in this life, you could have well been a murderer, a, murderer, a rapist, a pedophile, yeah. you name it in a past life, but you don't remember being that, that lower frequency individual because you evolved from it. You learned from your lessons and it's going to shock and hurt a lot of people when they start digging into their past lives to see yeah. what they've really been like. We've all done all the things. Like if yeah. actually, if you are vibrating higher in this lifetime, it's, it's only because, all that. it's only because in the past, you know, I know there's no time, but past lifetimes, you've already done all that. You've yeah. already experienced the lower and you kind of graduated to the higher, but you've, you've done yeah. all that. And sometimes you can even do both in the same life. That's the thing that people don't seem to understand is that you can be one way in a life yeah. and heal yourself and ascend in the same life. Absolutely. I, I see that happen all the time. You know, we do that in our, our industry. Yeah. People want to continue to judge and say, oh, well, you know, they only want to see them as one way. Um, but people can grow and they can change and they can heal. But it starts with love. Like that's the... If, if there's nothing else that I want to say about Ascension, it's really about sinking your mind and heart and soul with love, just like living a heart led life, basically. Heart yeah. versus ego. Yeah. My, getting getting, and, and and getting your mind and your heart, yeah. uh, mind, heart coherence, getting in alignment. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it actually... Um, you're not only just saying things, you're feeling it too. And that's, that's, that's all about manifestation. As you know, like, like yeah. you can say all the positive affirmations you want, but you got to feel it in your heart too. You got to feel it. You got to feel your future to create your future. Right. You know, you got to see it and believe it too. That's the believe thing. It. Like, right. Right. You know, and I know people say that you don't necessarily have to believe in your affirmations, which is true. Which is true. You don't you brainwash yourself. It just takes yeah, a lot longer. Can. It takes yeah. a lot longer. Yeah. Exactly. Like subliminals. I've been using them like crazy recently. And I've got to say that I already see the changes. Like it's it's interesting how fast they really work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because we've just basically brainwashed ourselves or, or been programmed and brainwashed with more negative things. And that's like, and then, and so the solution is brainwashing ourselves, however, it was subliminal or whatever you want to use with the positive things. And, and, you know, I've, I've heard, um, I don't know who said this, but I heard it's not, oh, Gabby Bernstein. She said, it's not harder. It's not more difficult to think a positive thought than a crap thought. Well, this is probably not her verbatim, but mm -hmm. it's just that we have practiced the crap thoughts more than, and that's all, that's the only difference. So that's the solution is practicing the better thoughts. There's always a better feeling thought, you know, and, and we, it's, it's catching yourself and it's just practice. You guys like it's, it's, 
it's doable, but we just got to pay attention and be mindful. And like you said, live in the moment, be in the moment or else you're not going to see it. You can't see when you're thinking about the future or worried about the past. You can't see what you're doing. You're not. And just being able to be in the moment, it releases you from that stress and anxiety. But again, because of the way that our system is set up, um, think about how many hours a day most people spend at a job. A lot of people don't necessarily like what they do for a living. They're mm-hmm. constantly distracted. And then what happens when they leave, if they have responsibilities like children or taking care of family members or just even wanting to have a social life, like where is there really time, time, <laughs> like, you know, right. penciled in for getting to know yourself and just taking a breather. So I'm finding that a lot more people who are are on the awakening journey, they go through this isolation separation period because I've gone through it myself. Like my, my social, you know, social life like shrunk basically. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, you know, kicked in and outgrowing people and relationships, whether it be friendships or romantic relationships. And most people don't even talk about what happens when you outgrow a friendship. Some people stay in friendships regardless because they, yeah, they've known somebody for so long, but if you're not gaining anything from that friendship, um, it or you not everything, then you kind of have to just like, let it go. You, you I've talked know. about that. I've, I've said to people, man, there needs to be like a like a Hallmark card, like to break up mm-hmm. with a friend. Like there's nothing like that because <laughs> no one talks about that. it. Because I actually did go through that last year and I felt, I felt bad. But when I wrote her the letter, like I was honest and I was- oh, you wrote a letter. I did. Like, because we were both writer, both writers. We met when we were undergrads. Um, yeah. I respect that. That's cool. Yeah. And I just, I felt so bad because we had gone through so much together, but in my heart, I just knew it was the right thing to do. Like, I just felt like we weren't connecting anymore and maybe she wasn't feeling it, but I was. And I just, I I had to let it go. Um, Yeah, I've had friends just like kind of just naturally fade away, but it's interesting if it's- that's happened too, yeah. Yeah, but if it's somebody who you were so, and then you could tell you're just like going through the motions Mm -hmm. and and then it's, yeah, like that sterile environment and it gets really weird. Yeah, it does. I, you know, we kind of touched a little bit on parallel lives and, um, you know, one of the talking points, is there anything you wanted to say? And and I want, I have a question with parallel lives earlier, you said something about how we shift all throughout, even each day. Do you Mm -hmm. think that would be like with each decision we make is a new parallel life or what are your thoughts on that? There's a lot of ways that this could play out um I think <laughs> I think <big> question <laughs> yeah I think essentially we do have the ability to create the life that we want yeah so when it comes to and I don't feel like anything is necessarily set in stone per se I do feel like there are certain events and as we've said exit points and choice points that we've kind of like whittled in there <laughs> like this is how our life you know this is how we this is what we came here to learn this is these the experiences that we came here to experience but i always feel like there's wiggle room i i do um and some people talk about soul contracts and and all that stuff which i haven't really talked about in a while because i'm trying to decide whether or not it's even something that i still align with or not to a certain extent yes but I, I still think that we do have more say in like, like, yeah, we could rip up those soul contracts or cut yeah. cords and things like that. You know, Bashar said it one time, the, the, the best way that he was talking about free will versus like mm-hmm. destiny and in the way he described it was like, okay, so you could have it set up in your, in this, this life, this incarnation, mm-hmm. I'm going, when I'm this age, I'm going to be in this, in this room at this time, Okay. But then there's a hallway and I have a, I have a choice of whether I turn right or left. So it's like, he was saying like, it's, and I thought, okay, my brain can wrap around that. Like you're going to be in this hallway, but then you have a choice of which door to open and where where to turn. So it's kind of like the wiggle room you just mentioned. You just made me think of Bashar actually. Oh, I, man, I go on and on about, on, about Bashar. I just, I love listening to him. And again, yeah. it's, I find it interesting, especially in the spiritual community now, where there's so many people that are just like, there's such a divide because that's where we're at right now in our ascension and awakening, where people 
even if there's somebody who is so well loved or just, you know, people enjoy listening to them like Bashar, there's still all these other people that are just like, no, he's a fraud and blah, blah. And I'm just Oh like, yeah, I see it. I see my it. gosh, like, can you just like maybe listen? Just listen without To the wisdom. judgment or, Yeah. or condemning them. Mm Just -hmm. take what you need and toss the rest. Yeah. And again, that plays into how we've all been ingrained to judge and Yeah. think so smallly, not only of other people, but of ourselves. Because I heard this like really good quote, like when we're judging somebody else, that's really just a reflection of what we don't like about ourselves so whatever is being triggered in that moment from whatever they're saying or doing that's something that you need to work on with yourself and it ends up coming out as a judgment on somebody Absolutely, else because everybody's our mirror, right? And yeah what I teach with, with the law of attraction is, you know, because this is what I learned, the expansion on law of attraction is I, I didn't I didn't understand why I was always attracting certain men into my life, liars, cheaters, yeah manipulators. mm And -hmm. when um, Greg Braden was like, had, had said he has this thing, seven mirrors, which, which is really, really good. Um, I would recommend anyone to look that up. He's, this is an old, it's an old video. He's got the... Um, you know, with a party in the back hair. What is that? I can't remember. Business in the front and party in the back He's with the he mullet. mullet, mullet. I couldn't remember what it's called. Thank you. So, um, yeah, but he, that's, that's when I learned when I watched that, um, it's a much older video, but it, how the, we actually will attract what we judge because that's a spark and everything's energy. It doesn't matter if it's a positive spark or a negative spark, I'm creating a spark. And so then I keep attracting more of exactly what I don't want. So, Yeah. That's why, because uh, I was like, the law of attraction doesn't make sense to me because I'm not a liar. I'm not a cheater. I'm not a manipulator. Why am I attracting this? If we attract what we are, what the heck? And um, then I'm like, oh, I judge the shit out of liars and cheaters and manipulators. That's why I kept. And guess what? I did a little judgment detox. I don't attract that at all anymore. So, so that's like, we got to take a look at ourselves. Like you're saying, like everything's our mirror and, and we attract what we judge. So y'all are only screwing yourselves up. If you're judging others, you're just good, good luck trying to get rid. That's why, that's why we, we, we end up having this, you know, we can change jobs. We can change boyfriends. We could change, you know, everything in our life, but wherever we go, there we are because we haven't changed our minds. <laughs> And this goes so deep, you know, because awakening, you also find out that the issues that you're going through, it may not necessarily be from your life or this life. It could be past life, but a lot of this stuff gets ingrained in our DNA. our ancestral DNA. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So you might be dealing with stuff that has been a major theme for many generations in your family. And, you know, because you might be scratching your head like, well, why the hell am I like dealing with like these money issues if like I didn't experience it Yeah. personally myself? Like it could just be an ancestral thing getting passed down. And again, you know, it just kind of like shows you like why certain families, I'll just say Yeah. it like that, you know, have accumulated so much wealth over years, like with the generational wealth. Well, there's also that thing that they call generational curses, as they call it. So, Yeah. you know, it's, And it's you might interesting. be the lucky one to do the ancestral healing, which sucks, right? You know, you, it might be, Oh, I mean, it's it's good, it's good, but it's a tough, it's, it's it's tough. definitely me, but I know I'm not the only one in my family that's doing it, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but I might be that missing link between like my father and my mother that kind of like does it. And yeah, so it's, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, but at least, at least I know that with so many people that are waking up and ascending right now, that I'm not going to be alone in this process, that I'm not alone. There could Yeah. very well be other people. Well, I know for a fact there are other people in my family that are doing their own inner work because everybody is ascending right now and awakening, whether they realize it or not. So I just We're want to all put that we're out all there spiritual for people. beings. Yeah, We're, I want whether to put that you out believe there it or for not. your audience because seriously, they might not even realize that they're going through it, but things just aren't making sense to them anymore. Mm So hmm if you're at that point, yeah, then um, I, I Like you're feel going for crazy you. a little bit. <laughs> I feel for you. And that is why I developed my program because I just know 
that there are so many people out there that don't have like the support system that I had. I was blessed to have people around me to talk about this stuff. Yeah. 2005, 2006, when I started it now, whether or not they fully believed me, I don't know, but I know my uncle, he knew about David Icke. He knew about him before I even mentioned him and got into him. And I introduced him to Michael Tessarian. So, you know, you, you'd be surprised what some people know, but they've had to keep it hidden because it wasn't considered to be mainstream. Yeah. Right? I quit talking to people because nobody around me, I, I wasn't given that. I, I, but now that we have the internet, it, I love it, you know, cause it's, it's like, okay, we can say all these negative things, but it's also can be used as a beautiful tool, you know, and, and a, way, a connection, yeah. can, a way to connect with everybody. So what are some practical tips that you could give our viewers regarding Ascension if they're going through it right now or something they can apply to their daily lives? just take a step back and realize that you're going to be okay, <laughs> that you're not crazy. The C word that everybody loves to throw out there. You're not crazy for thinking that things just don't make sense anymore because again, they're not supposed to, they're not supposed I love to. That. Um, but also realize that whatever you're feeling now, you're not the only one who's going through it. There's so many people in this world that are waking up every single day, every moment. Um, so you're not alone, whether or not you feel that way. So a good way, a good thing that you can implement, I would advise them to start spending more time outside in nature if they don't. Spending out, spending time outdoors is a fantastic way. Now, if you live in a big metropolitan city, like a lot of my family is from New York. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, I mean, you got, depending on where you are, if you're in Manhattan or close to it, there, there's Central Park. You, you can go there and you can just take a walk somewhere. Um and I do realize that depending on where you live, that's going to play a factor. But just sometimes being outdoors is very helpful. Um, but also meditation and breath work. I will say that a lot of people complain that they can't slow their mind down or quiet it to do meditation. And here's here's the thing. A lot of people are addicted to caffeine. What? Yeah. No, I, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I, I, and I used to be too. It's my last what, vice. It's my but, last But vice. what is caffeine? It's a neurological stimulant. So if you're constantly putting something in there that's meant to stimulate your brain, how do you expect to be able to slow your mind down? You're right. And actually meditate. You're not going to be able to because here, here's my take on it. I'm not a doctor or anything, but caffeine. And from my personal experience, I've always been sensitive to it. And my body literally rejected it back in like 2018. I got very sick. Like we were I, talking about earlier, yeah. your body was like, yeah. oh, and this happened that. years ago. So I had to give it up. But I also, I was, I would sneak it as a kid, like soda and stuff. My mom didn't really want me having that, but I would sneak it like, especially late at night. And it started causing me what? migraines as a kid oh. I had to get a cat scan and everything so the doctor was like yes yeah, stay away from the caffeine um so I've always been sensitive to it so my thing is and this is going to make a lot of people uncomfortable cut down on the caffeine yeah I I've, I've definitely cut mine down and I know a guy who who's exactly like you're just like he has one cup and he's so sensitive to it he has no business drink. I wouldn't drink it at all if it did that to me but I can really have a glass a, a glass a cup of coffee in the mm -hmm. evening and go to sleep and but like it it doesn't doesn't have that effect on me but I also I I, I kind of drink pretty weak and I've cut back like to where I have like one cup in the morning and, and I will have one in the evening and I, I, I get super sleepy after I drink it. It's well, because weird. it, you know, it, it works on your adrenaline, you know, and, and that system. So, I mean, it's, it's, I told myself that I'm not sensitive to it. That's the reality I created Tamika. I'm like, you are not sensitive because it's my only thing that I still like. Well, here's my thing. Here's have. a question that I'm going to ask you. Do you get migraines if you don't have, coffee or caffeine for like a day or two. Do you well, feel any physical? I've, like I've never tested that theory. <laughs> I and see I have. I've got and I've talked to a lot of people who have quit caffeine and the one thing that they always talk about are the migraines. Because uh. that's where it's that's what it's doing. It's stimulating your brain all the time. Like every time you ingest it, like case in point, yesterday I went to Wawa, which is like a local convenience store. They have them here in Jersey, PA, and even in Florida, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they branched out to Florida. Yeah. And uh, they didn't have what I was looking for. So I'm like, all right, I'll try the cappuccino. Got a 12 
ounce cup, took a few sips of it. And I was like, oh my God, like, like got so jittery, like, just like, just sped up. Like my, I was like, oh, okay. Like it's still in my refrigerator from yesterday. If that ever happened to me, I would totally quit. Like I, if, if yeah. something, I don't like to feel jittery like it that. Was, it was awful. I was like, oh no, I can't do this. But you gotta wait for it to wear off. Like, uh. yeah. So that's my thing. Like, if you want to try meditation, but you're a caffeine person, my <laughs> advice to you, if if you encounter the problem of not being able to slow your mind down, mm -hmm. do breath work because I always try to do breath work before I meditate to calm yourself and do some stretching as well. Mm -hmm. um, some people will do breath work and yoga, then go into the meditation, which is great because this one guy that I watch on YouTube all the time, I think it's called breath work with Sandy. He's awesome because he does them from like these exotic locations. Like they're beautiful in the background. Um, and he always incorporates breath work and meditation together. So you'll mm. do the breath work first and then he'll give you time at the end to do meditation, to just lie there or sit there. Um, so yeah, do whatever you can to relax your body before doing the meditation, because for a lot of people, they're bringing the stress of the day into that meditation. And then that's not what you want to do. Um, you want to be relaxed before you even try. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, and something that I have to do, because you mentioned earlier, just so many distractions in our day, and that's why we can't mm -hmm. live in the moment. I, I, you know, all those alarms our iPhones let us have, I don't, I guess Androids probably have it too. I set mm -hmm. so many alarms throughout the day, just as reminders to be in the present moment. So some of them say that, like, just mm -hmm. to take it like a little, my friend calls uh -huh. meditation supplements, like, it, like instead of being like, it could just be a minute or when, yeah. w like, okay, so like when I'm drinking my coffee, which is right here, um, like I just, okay, I'm focused on my coffee. I'm in this press, you know, instead of just multitasking all the time, I set an alarms to say certain little affirmations or prayers. Like I do, I have so many alarms going off during the day because, because I'm pulled in so many different directions. Yeah, and that happens. It does. It's a practical does. tip for anybody who, who you set your alarms and then that'll bring you back. You, you have to go out of your way sometimes to be present. And also I was going to say two things. Meditation isn't always just sitting there, closing your eyes. Mm -hmm. It can be just being in the moment too. Mm -hmm. So whatever that feels like to you, then do that if it makes you feel good. Um, <laughs> Focusing on one thing. That's like, that's yeah. the thing that saved me is when Abraham or somebody was like, focus on one thing. It could be the, a candle. It could be the air conditioner. I, it could oh, be nice. petting my yeah. cat is, is a freaking meditation, you know, and, and yeah. listening to him purr. That's, that's like, like, let's not be too strict on what we label meditation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it can be just oops, being in the present moment. <laughs> uh -huh. And one of these things, like I'm one of those people that can put themselves into a trance very easily because that's oh, nice. thing what meditation is. I can do it while I drive. And I do it safely. I do do it safely. Like, especially if I'm on like back roads or even on the highway, sometimes I'll be focused on driving, but at the same time, I can easily go into a trance so nice. that I'm able to manifest something. It's, it's crazy that I have that ability to like, kind of just put myself into a trance. I know I'm driving. I'm co coherent and paying attention, but I can also like in my mind be doing like visualizing certain things. Could you do that before when you were drinking coffee or is that a post coffee, um, post -coffee gift? <laughs> good question. Cause you've got me thinking about caffeine now. <laughs> you know what? I want to say no, because I used to work for the state of New Jersey as a um, CPS worker, Child Protective Services in yeah. New Jersey. It used to be called DIFUS, but now it's DCPNP. And um, no, I used to spend a lot of time on the roads, especially when I was doing the training because the training academy was two and a half hours away from my my home. Okay. Um, so I spent a lot of time traveling at that job. And I can honestly say, I don't think I had that back then. If I did, it wasn't as well developed as it is okay. now because I was doing a lot of caffeine back then. I was because that's the only way that I was able to function in that job until again, I ended up in the ER and I was just, my body was like, yeah, you got to just, okay. no, like we can't yeah. do this anymore. So that's another little 
pro to quitting caffeine. There you go. It was. And just overall taking better care of myself too, honestly, like with diet, meditation, and just a, a healthier um, lifestyle in a sense. That is awesome. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to put all of Tamika's information in the description box, every way to reach her in her, <laughs> uh, all of her links. But Tamika, what, what would you say, like the best way for people to find you? Um, is it Instagram or? You know what? I'm available on Instagram, on TikTok as well, um, because I do love putting my TikTok videos on there. In fact, I have to, I'm going to record one today because I know I had mentioned that I did a guest speaking last week and they sent me a card. Um, the yeah. Season, so I can't wait to like add that in on the footage that I already recorded um, and read some of the stuff that they, they wrote to me. But I would say Instagram, TikTok, um, you can email me, email is okay. or going through my website as well. I mean, you can message me through there. So. What's your, what's your website? Uh, mystical fire, ascension, life coaching.com. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to also have that in the show notes and um, perfect. Well, thank you guys so much in closing and Tamika, thank you for your time. This was a wonderful conversation. We almost need a part <laughs> two. I know. And um, I feel like we, we still, it gets so deep and we could probably have a, like quite a few episodes about this quantum physics type stuff. Yeah. But um, in closing, I just want to remind viewers, like Tamika said earlier, and like I teach, we do create our own reality. So we got to always monitor our beliefs and our thoughts and our feelings, create our beliefs. Really like Abraham would always say, a uh, belief is just a thought you keep on thinking. And so right. we can it change is. it. We can change with the thoughts that we keep on thinking. So mm -hmm. if you feel like um, you're stuck in life or like you just feel like, you know, you're, you can't create your own reality. There's some sort of block. That's what we do. That's, a, that's what Tamika helps with blocks. I help with blocks. So, and then my website's dayonelifecoaching.com. I offer a free clarity call. Um, and we could see if coaching is right for you. Maybe it's not right for you. But also, if you like this episode, please share it with your friends so other people can meet Tamika. <laughs> share it with your friends and um, hit like. And I would love for you to join this community, um, uh, the Spiritual Transformation Podcast with Mary Beth. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And we're going to help raise the vibration of the universe. That's all. You know, we're just small goals, small goals. And so also to check out some of the previous episodes I, I what i do is i each week i interview people who are spiritually gifted like tamika uh people who can channel mediums people who've had near-death experiences but we got i got a lot of that, those lined up too when we have some in the past and so if if you're a spiritual junkie like that that sounds good for you please subscribe and thank you for tuning in and we will see you on the next episode, every Friday, we have a new guest. Thanks so much, Tamika. Thank you.